Mike McGrail, I run a marketing consultancy in Edinburgh called Velocity Digital. Effectively help businesses make sense of the web and how they can use it to promote their business. Uh, and social media is obviously a huge part of that. I work across Scotland with very, very small businesses up to, to big businesses, so I can work with anyone. Um, what my aim today in the next kind of 25 minutes is just to give you some very... Do you want to come on? No, sorry, go for it. No, fine. All aboard. Cheers, all aboard the mic bus. You can all boot us if you want, it's fine. <laughs> you can sit at the back like the bad boys do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you've not missed anything, just introducing myself. I'm Mike from Velocity Digital. Um, what I want to do today is try and give you some, you guys something practical that you can take away and, and, and give a go with in the terms of social media. Show of hands first, who's using social media for their business or on behalf of the business they work for? and a wee bit okay and can you keep your hand up if you feel like it's a successful activity for your business mm -hmm. two two people right okay what was your business photography photography what type of photography is it Social photography. okay so you're um what what platforms what what are you doing on social media uh basically showing clients work i've been doing that day things like that to encourage gift voucher sales and things like okay that. Great, and yourself? Did you say it was working for you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, we're a training provider and we use on the social media like activities that like learners have done, job opportunities for them, days that okay. come in, etc. Brilliant, good stuff. So I think a lot of companies go through this kind of cycle of they get very excited about social media, we should be doing stuff there, they feel the pressure to get on board and then they maybe don't see a lot of things happening for them. I think that's quite a bit of a syndrome in small businesses as well because quite often you don't necessarily have the time to spend to do it and do it properly. So what I'm going to do, just talk about the platform. So when I talk about a platform, that is a Facebook or a Twitter, for example. And some platforms are what I would term as the kind of key players. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Then we've got things like Pinterest, Tumblr, Snapchat, the list goes on and on and on. But what, the one thing I'm always pressing home to clients is that you know, to try and be on everything and do everything well is almost impossible. And also, it doesn't mean your audience is everywhere. Now, the two platforms that I believe are suitable for pretty much every business on the planet are Facebook and Twitter. Why is that? They've got big, big audiences. And a lot of people will tell you, if we take Facebook, that that's not a place for uh, a business-to-business -business environment. It's more for getting in front of consumers, so people that aren't buying on behalf of another business. The problem for me with that is that actually, everybody within a business that buys on behalf of that business is also a consumer, and they're also spending time on Facebook. So if you're clever about how to get in front of them, then it can work for you. I wanna dig a wee bit deeper into Facebook just now. So Facebook, as with any social media, is a very visual platform. And the first big tip of the day is, anytime you're putting an image up on Facebook, you should make it 1200 by 1200 pixels. Why is that? Because that fills the space that Facebook allows a photo to uh, fill up, funnily enough, on in an update. Now, the problem is, who's all got a Facebook page for their business here? You might not know, but when somebody first comes to your Facebook page and hits that like button, the chances of them coming back to your actual page are so, so slim. In fact, 99% of people will never do that. So the only way we're getting to people within Facebook is within the newsfeed. So when you put an update out there, it goes in amongst their friends and their family's updates, which is all fair and well, if they're actually getting the update in there. So if you go back a few years, 2011, if you had a Facebook page and you put an update on there and you had 10,000 fans, for example, around 75% of those fans would at least get that update in their newsfeed and amongst their friends and their family. The average now in 2015 of that reach is two and a half percent. So anybody that's been using Facebook for a business, you've probably noticed over the last few years a fairly horrible decline. It's not two and a half percent for everybody. Different industries buck the trend, different types of businesses buck the trend. But the kind of overriding thing is now that it's very, very difficult to get to people on Facebook through what I term as, and everybody else terms as, organic reach. The organic reach is we put something up there and the people we want to see it, are they seeing it without us paying anything into Facebook? So 
when it's hard enough to reach people, we need to make sure that our updates, unless we're paying for them, are eye-catching. So 1200 by 1200 gives you that big, strong image. If you don't put an image in a Facebook update, the chances are that its reach will be even further cut by up to 50%. So think visual and try and have uh, image attached to every Facebook update. Also, you can share links on there video as well if you're updating if you're trying to put video onto Facebook a lot of people are uh, in the habit of if they've got a video of theirs up on a YouTube channel for example they'll take the link and put it up uh, paste it into a Facebook update Facebook will load a little player that the person can click it don't do that anymore you want to upload that actual video file into a Facebook update Facebook are trying to kill YouTube and they're really going after them so they're still given a little bit of boost re um, um, organic reach boost to video but it also makes it far better for the end user most likely on their mobile they can watch it in a much bigger window within there so for Facebook and I'm today the problem is with this short session is that I'm scratching the surface just so 1200 by 1200 video first then we've got the Facebook advertising model you can decide to boost a post Who, who's ever noticed that when you put something in there's a boost button you hit that boost button, you allocate some money, you can do one of three things. You can make sure it goes in, at least goes into the newsfeed of everybody who's a fan of your page. Doesn't mean they're going to see it, doesn't mean they're going to act on it. You can put it into the newsfeed of all of your friends and their friends. Again, there's no guarantee of any action or that they're actually going to see it. The third option is a quite a low scale targeting. So we can go geographic and age. So we can say Glasgow 20 to 30, and then you can put in some interests. So Facebook categorizes people by things they're interested in. They're telling that by your Facebook activity effectively. So if we're a men's fashion shop on uh, in Glasgow, we can put in Glasgow 20 to 30 years old, men's fashion, gr men's grooming, tailoring and it will put that update in front of other people now that's a kind of low grade Facebook ad but then you've got this huge Facebook ad model that means you can target anyone on Facebook effectively with your ad and the targeting goes to crazy crazy levels at this point in time recently done some work for a kids clothing company it's for between kids of the age of one and three is their main customer group we are targeting mums of parents of kids of that age with a Facebook ad it goes to that level I know it is scary you You'll notice sometimes if you see an ad on Facebook, it'll be very, very quite scary in terms of what it's targeting you with based on what you've just done in your life. So Facebook's really tough now without in installing and uh, using some sort of ad model on there. I meant to say that um, Martin from the, the Federation of Small Businesses, he's going to give me all your email addresses so I can spam you all. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> um, uh, I will follow up this session with some links for various articles and, and resources that will help you. Twitter, I love Twitter. Uh, I see it as almost the ultimate social network. And one of the key things there is that we can go out to people and speak to them. With Facebook, unless you're paying for ads, people have to really come to you. Twitter, wonderful thing within Twitter, Twitter search. I can look for people that are looking for what my company supplies and start a conversation with them. So. Um, I'm a kilt hire company and I know for a fact that there will be people tweeting in my city saying I need to hire a kilt for a wedding, any recommendations? Now really, they're looking for recommendations from other people on Twitter. If you can enter yourself into that conversation, then you've got a potential customer there. Now what we're not doing is saying, hello Mr. Smith, our kilt hire starts at £99, here's a link. Some people might react well to that, but most people will find that kind of scary because most people don't understand how Twitter works and that everybody can see what they're tweeting and companies are trying to harness that. What you want to have is a article on your website that talks about something like five ways to make sure your kilt is looking sharp for your wedding. Then people, then you go and you say, hello, Mr. Smith, looks like you're looking for a kilt. If you do end up hiring one, here's how to wear it properly. You link them through to that site, that piece of content on your website. They are then hopefully going to read that and go, this seems like a good company, I'm going to look at their higher services. So we're not hitting them with this big hard punch of, here's a sale, Here, it's going to cost you this. You're giving people something in, 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 in advance of them hopefully buying. So I love that outbound nature of Twitter. Twitter also has an ad model. It does fairly similar things to Facebook. It takes. It takes your tweet and puts it in front of people you want to put it in. It's 
vastly more expensive than Facebook in most instances though. So those kids ads that I was talking about running on Facebook just now, eight pence per click. The product costs 16 pound and it is selling at that. So it's costing eight pence to get that person on the website and then to buy a 16 pound product. I'm gonna be happy with that. Facebook, uh, Twitter, sorry, tends to be much higher than that. The reason that Facebook ad is working so well is that every day we're tweaking it, we're looking at the data and we're making sure that it's on the money in terms of the optimization for it. I mentioned 1200 by 1200 on uh, Facebook. For Twitter, the optimal image size is 1024 by 512. It's a strange shape, it looks a bit like a letterbox. Why is that? People are scrolling through Twitter on their desktop, tablet, mobile, and images are within the tweet. If you keep it at that size, the full image will be displayed within the tweet. What does that allow you to do? It's more impactful. It can actually extend your message out with that 140 characters. What I'm not saying is to just make uh, an image full of words because nobody's going to like that. But you know, if if you are trying to push wedding photography, for example, you could have a nice one of your nice images with wedding services on the front of it, for example, just to give people that more, that wee bit more. And Twitter's hard because you've got to get your message across. Most of the time you're going to want to link to something. You want one or two hashtags in there. And then if you add an image, you don't have a lot of space. There's a real art to writing effective tweets. That might sound like you need design skills, but actually there's a great free service that I use from time to time called pickmonkey.com. P-I-C, then monkey, like a monkey in a tree.com and it's free, it allows you to resize images very easily, add filters, put nice text overlays. There is a paid version, but actually you don't need it. You don't really need to use it, they'll love me for saying that, but um, <laughs> it's, um, it's great. And it makes people with no design skills, Photoshop and all that sort of stuff, be able to create great content for social media. Um, anybody using Instagram for their business? What's your business, sir? Graphic design, how's Instagram working for you? It's okay, it's interesting, but probably just not restricted by the digital process. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so you're made for Instagram, really. I mean, Instagram is obviously all about visuals. Social media tends to be about visual impact in general, but Instagram is number one. And I don't think Instagram is necessarily suitable for all businesses because you need to be able to create imagery that catches the eye and that it kind of captivates people. Um, on the flip side of that, you'll see a lot of great businesses using Instagram to give a kind of behind the scenes story of how a business works, the people behind it, so on and so forth. So, big bit of advice for Instagram. With Twitter, I say no more than two hashtags in a tweet and make sure that at the end of the tweet, don't drop them in the middle of a tweet. There's research that shows nobody reads past a hashtag. On Instagram, we're flipping that though, and the sweet spot for the amount of hashtags is 11 tagged into an Instagram update. Buffer, another thing you should check out, buffer.com. They've got a great social media management tool, uh, but they've also got a phenomenal blog on there. And they, um, they've they done loads of research, they've looked at loads of Instagram updates, and 11 hashtags is the, number, is the number you want to aim for. That will give it the most reach within Instagram and hopefully generate the most engagement. How do you know which hashtags to use? Another website, iconosquare.com, I-C-O-N-O square.com plug in any hashtag into the search so if you're selling if you sell bmws put in bmw it'll show you all the top hashtags that people that are instagramming about bmw related things will use plug them into your update so on and so forth um the overriding thing with social media in terms of updating is don't do it for the sake of doing it you need to be regular but you need to have quality don't feel like you just have to have a continual presence because you'll just turn people off what we're trying to do with social media is yes, we want to grow our business, but we want to build awareness, we want to build that engagement. But I was talking about the kilt thing there. If that guy decided that he didn't need to hire a kilt at that point in time, but he needed one three months down the line, he may think, I remember that one in Glasgow, actually. I read that great article, I'm gonna phone them. So it's creating that front of mind that then pushes, if you think of a sales funnel, social media is the top of that sales funnel. You're getting that initial awareness and you're hopefully gonna drag people down in time. So think quality over quantity. In terms of actual, the balance of content, so how much should we be talking about the business? How much should we be tweeting or Facebooking things that are not directly related to the business but relevant? So great articles, great videos from other sources. I would actually say about half and half. In fact, 
even more heavily weighted towards not talking about your business because that can turn people off but make it relevant if you're a graphic design you're going to appeal to people that are you're going to have the design community you might appeal to them but they're probably not the people that are going to buy off you but they might be the people that recommend you so put stuff out there that's going to appeal to them but then the other side of it is here's the latest project we've worked on or here's a new logo we've created or whatever um instagram yeah, mentioned that. LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn, who's using LinkedIn? Is everybody on there? LinkedIn's more about you as the business person or the person that works within that business. You've got your branded pages on there as well that you should be keeping updated. However, um, I don't tend to see a lot of success with them. For me, LinkedIn is more about you as an individual. There's a few killer things in there you should never do. You should not just try and connect with as many people as you can. You should really have a reason for contacting people. In fact, LinkedIn's rules state that you should really know who they are so you've met them in networking or something like that. If you are gonna do a cold approach, I get sick when I get a connection request and people haven't changed that little bit of standard text. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn or whatever it says. At least go to the level of tailoring that a wee bit. I'll do that from time to time if I think somebody might be interested in what I'm offering. Um, LinkedIn has an ad model, vastly expensive. You're talking three, four, five pound a click to get somebody on your site. I'm not gonna go into the other platforms. I need to watch the time as well. Um, one, there's some other key things I wanna talk about. So tracking things. We need to know what is happening on social media, what social media is doing to affect our business. The place that people are gonna make the final decision about working with you is more than likely gonna be your website. They might like everything you do in social media and they might build that front of mind and that kind of rapport with them, but we want to be getting people onto the website as well. And a great way to be doing that is by creating that sort of content I was talking on the website. Blogs and articles is a quite an accessible one for people. Video is not always accessible for a business to make. Infographics and that type of thing, they're not always that easy to do. Most people can write something that's coherent and, and interesting. Um, but we want to know what happens when people come on our website from social media. So does anybody not have a website for their business? Crazy question, but some people still don't. And does anybody not have some form of analytics package set up on their Google Analytics? Who's running Google Analytics on their site? Guy's got nothing. Okay. So really you need you need to do that. It's free. You need to install a wee bit of code in your back end of your site. Um, the other thing to look at is uh, called UTM tracking. So if you have Google Analytics on your site and you click into the social media section of it, it will tell you who, how many people visited from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram potentially, although it's hard, you can't, you've only got that one place to link people on Instagram in your bio. Um, that's all it tells you. So that could be people that are actually putting out links to your site off their own back, which is great if that's happening. However, you want to be able to tell what your actual activity is generating in terms of traffic to the site. UTM links, they allow you to add little bits of content to a URL and that tells Google exactly where that came from. So for example, I've sent the tweet to the guy who wants the kilt that links to the top five tips for looking good in your kilt article. I would create a specific link for that tweet that then will tell me if the guy actually visited the site. And then I at least know that that's working in terms of sending the people back to the site. So if he didn't come back and say, thanks so much for the article, we might not know. So then you create these links for everything you're doing. It can be fairly time consuming, but if you wanna get down to that granular level, and I do recommend you do, because as a business person, you want to know exactly what your time across anything is returning for you, that's a good way to do it. Um, you're also probably gonna to want to think about, is anybody using Hootsuite? Sprout Social or Buffer. They are management tools for social media. And one of the killer problems with social media, I've said killer a lot today, I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not gonna hurt anyone. Um, <laughs> one, of the, one of the things is managing it. We have a struggle to keep on top of it all. Something like Hootsuite will give you a place online, on your phone, in your app, where you can have your Facebook coming in, your tweets coming in, your Instagram coming in, you can see what's going on, if questions need answered, and that's the thing. It is social media, we need to speak to people, we need to thank people for sharing our stuff, we need to answer questions. And I've been talking a lot about creating content and putting it out there, it's a social thing, it's a conversation. And as a business, that's an amazing opportunity for us to actually engage with people. To summarize, 
Think about the platforms as individuals. Do not cross post. You can automatically post in between things. Do not do that. Optimize your images. Um, quality over quantity though. Think about how you're going to track things and think about how you're going to manage things and think about testing out some of the paid models. Give Facebook a go. The beautiful thing is the difference between an ad on, on a social network versus taking and using the, uh, an ad in a magazine or a paper is that we don't pay up front. We could literally go, I've got 10 quid and I'm going to give that Facebook ad a go. And as it goes, you can stop at any point in time. So you're not chucking money at something and not knowing what you're getting out the back of it. Um, I guess one of the overriding things is have fun while you're doing it because it can be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, don't get carried away, don't try and be everywhere and um, just make sure you have it to achieve for you. Is it awareness? Are you looking to access a new part of the market, a new phase? Um, if you want a card from me and you've got follow-up questions, come and grab one. I've got time for questions now if you want to answer, ask any, I'll answer them.